Speaker. Tonight, I want to outline part of my vision for Australia to get our country back on track, to keep our nation safe and secure, to make life easier and better for all Australians, because this Labor government has made life so much tougher for Australians, because this Labor government has set our country on a very dangerous course. Almost two years ago, Prime Minister Albanese was elected promising a reduction of $275 each year in your power prices, cheaper mortgages, and that you would be better off under a Labor government. All of those promises have been broken. And this government has been focused on the wrong priorities. It started with the Prime Minister's voice referendum. Not only did it waste $450 million, which could have helped families with the cost of living pressures that you're now facing, the referendum also divided our nation. And let's not forget that the Prime Minister called no voters chicken littles and doomsayers. Today, millions of Australians are struggling to pay their bills. Even going to the supermarket and petrol station has become stressful for so many. Prime Minister, Australians are genuinely hurting under your government, and they're not chicken littles. Electricity bills haven't gone down by $275, as was pledged on 97 occasions. They've skyrocketed. The Treasurer will give you a $300 rebate, but he knows full well that your annual electricity bills have increased, in some cases by up to $1,000 since Labor formed government. Interest rates have gone up on 12 occasions under Labor, and a typical Australian household with a mortgage is $35,000 worse off. And that's if you're lucky enough to own a home. Under this Prime Minister, the great Australian dream of home ownership has turned into a nightmare. Even finding somewhere to rent is near impossible. Now, the government has brought in an additional 923,000 migrants in just two years. On the available data, the government has only contributed 265,000 new homes and units to accommodate those people. And then, of course, there's Labor's tax on the family car and ute. You're having to fork out literally thousands of dollars more simply for choosing some of Australia's most popular vehicles, like a Toyota RAV4, including the hybrid, or the Ford Ranger, all because the government is trying to force you into buy an electric vehicle. And if you want to buy an electric vehicle, that is your choice. But if you choose to buy a vehicle that is not a hybrid or is not a diesel, that is your choice, and it should be restored. Now, all of this has happened in a very quick period of time, in just two years. Paul Keating famously said that when governments change, the country changes. Prime Minister Albanese and his government have changed our country. But as so many Australians can attest to, not for the better. You, your family, your children and our country can't afford another three years of this government. Yeah. I know how to make decisions to get our country back on track. Yeah. And tonight I will remind Australians of the Coalition's economic plan to lower your cost of living and restore confidence to our economy. I will also outline several policies which Australians can expect from a Coalition government under my leadership. Policies to get power bills down and to shore up our nation's future energy security. Policies to help alleviate our housing crisis and revive the great Australian dream of home ownership. Yeah. Policies to improve workforce participation and health services. And policies to make our communities, our society and our country better and safer. But first, Mr Speaker, I'll respond to the Treasurer's budget from Tuesday night. As I've said previously, we're in opposition which supports good policy and stands against bad policy. Since Labor formed government, we've backed more than 180 bills which have passed this parliament. But we've opposed some bills where Labor and the Greens have collaborated to pass legislation which is not in our country's best interests. Just as we endorsed some sensible measures in Labor's first two budgets, we do the same for its third budget. In particular, the $3.4 billion for medicines on the pharmaceutical benefits scheme and the extension of emergency payments to support women and children fleeing domestic violence, which the Coalition first established in 2021. In my 22 years in Parliament, I've seen good and bad budgets, but the budget handed down on Tuesday night is one of the most irresponsible I've seen. Yeah. 
Inflation is a huge problem for Australia. On comparative inflation, Australia is worse than the US, Singapore, Germany, Spain, Japan, the Netherlands, Italy, South Korea, Canada, France and the entire euro area. The reason interest rates have gone up 12 times is because the government can't control its spending and because of its reckless energy policy. In three Labor budgets, the government has lifted spending by a staggering $315 billion or $30,000 per Australian household. The Reserve Bank Governor has sounded the alarm on inflation being homegrown, and she's exactly right. In the last 48 hours, every credible economist has issued scathing assessments of this budget because Labor has us in an inflationary hole and is still digging.